Hi, my name is Philip. Welcome to the RIP Charts Sea Temperature Tutorial. I've already logged in. Let's go ahead and hit Map Search. Uh, today we're going to go over sea temps, kind of what they mean, um, how to best utilize them, how we derive the data sets, and just to, to give you a general understanding of, of what we're looking for and what we're what's the point of sea temperature and why they're so important to what we do. Um, we offer multiple types of sea temps. Um, in some of our regions, we offer granules, daily summaries, three-day composites, and multi-resolution. Multi in other regions, we, we only offer the granule and multi-resolution. So um, let's go ahead and look at uh, some granules. When you do a search, the thumbnails will come up, and these will quickly uh, give you the ability to ascertain whether or not the areas of interest have any data. Uh, sea temps tend to update the most frequently, um, therefore they're something important to pay attention to, especially as you're moving into winter months as well as into spring months. You, you know, the, the different temperature transitions are, are, are quite important. Uh, in the summer when things have heated up significantly, um, then you start getting into color transitions as the most important. But temperatures definitely play a very important role. Uh, that is because different fish species are physiologically locked into certain temperature ranges. That's why you hear people go, when it reaches X temperature, we know that the tuna are going to be here, or we know that the marlin are going to be here, and people have their favorite quote-unquote temperatures. Um, the reason being is that those fish tend to stay within those areas because their, their body dictates so. If they end up in water that's cooler um, than it's supposed to be, then their heart slows down and they're not able to chase bait or avoid predators as quickly. And if they're in water that's much warmer than they're supposed to be in, then they burn quite a bit of energy, um, more so than they need to be able to sustain, continuing to eat as much as they can to, to have enough energy to sustain. So they are limited on the low side in temperature, and they're also limited on the high side, even though a lot of these species that we target as fishermen um, can deal with some pretty warm temperatures. Um, that being said, let's go ahead and look at some images. I'll go over the, um, the, the composites. Daily summaries, we take all the images during a day and, and put them together. Uh, take out whatever cloud interference we can and build an image. Uh, Three-day composite works the same and builds a more complete image, as you can see, over time. And then uh, we have uh, an, an image called multi-resolution. This one is a cloud-free image, um, but it takes into account uh, that if there are clouds present and it is reading under cloud cover, then it's not uh, quite as detailed, so it's not as high as resolution. But we will look at um, the granules, and then we'll compare that to the multi-resolution, and you can see what I'm talking about. So if I were focusing off my efforts off of Venice, Louisiana, um, like we did in the true color and chlorophylls, um, I would look, and the data is obviously got some little cloud cover there, a little cloud cover, um, you know, a little bit of cloud cover right in there, and that's what these areas of gray are, and this is kind of a more complete image. I'm going to go ahead and jump to here for illustrative purposes because that's the first image that's going to do us some benefit. Zoom into the area. And um, what this image represents is, is different temperature ranges, each different set of water. Um, I don't know why I keep rolling over that, but um, I do. Let me turn that off, turn the reports off. And um, right here we can see that there's a temperature break. You've got some blues that represent some cooler water. That's 61.3 degrees Fahrenheit. And if you get over here into the orange, you've got 72.2. And then as you get deeper, each where you click on the map, you'll get a latitude and longitude and an instant temp readout, which is kind of nice to see um, how significant a temperature break is. So we've got a, a very significant temperature break here, um, which would be a highly beneficial to target. Um, that first break in here uh, probably would look good as you cross it, but you really want to get into that, that warmer water right in here. Very important. Um, as with all um, different um, maps, you can overlay bathymetry. It's right along the shelf. Got a nice finger. I think we had seen that back in the chlorophyll and true color tutorial. And um, so a lot of things lining up here. We've got good temperature. Um, we've got good clarity as seen in those previous tutorials. Um, we've got um, you know beneficial altimetry if we you put the altimetry overlays on there. So everything's um, lining up pretty good. And um, you know some decent currents too. So those are uh, those are there as well. These are deep water currents to kind of give you an indication of what's occurring. You know, there's a little bit of rotation right in there. So, 
all looks good there. Sea temps are, are, are important in the sense that we can really um, uh, discern some interesting features. Um, you've got uh, you know some transitional areas here where you go into the first and it kind of it warms up a little bit and then you get a, a very significant line. Um, those are definitely features to pay attention to. So, but sea temps are definitely important. Um, that, you know, some to review important things about them. They come across more frequently. Um, so as long as you know that the the water clarity is there, you can track it with the different sea temps images as they come across. Um, Make sure you know the temperature range of your target species. You know, for instance, um, you know, albacore run in that 58, 59 degree water up to like 62. So those are some important things. Uh, for instance, here in the Gulf, um, you know, they're targeting marlin, tuna, wahoo, yellowfin, those type of things. And, you know, 72 degree water is some good water. So um, we're in that 72 degree plus water right here. And away from that colder stuff, and uh, definitely, definitely a good place to target um, for sure. So that's a quick, quick run. Oh, let's look over and look at uh, the multi-resolution. Keep in mind, right here, we see that nice finger along the shelf. Okay, so we'll just put a, we'll just add a waypoint here real quick, and just go uh, nice rip, and we'll track that against um, the the multi-res. Just to see what I just want you guys to, to see the difference between a, a multi-res image and a granule, and why granules are so many. But because granules are so um, recent and so together, um, because they're they're just a, the most recent snapshot of what's occurring, those are the definitely the best things to utilize. But multi-resolution does have its purpose, um, albeit it's not exactly to to pick out. Um, exact differences or exact rip lines and I'll show you why. So let's move into here. So we saw that was the waypoint we added and we knew that there was some colder water inshore and some warmer nice finger water but because the resolution of this image when it was taken this is uh, a day before that the granules the granules that this multi-resolution takes um, about a day to process and includes everything from radar to radar uh, sea temps which are cloud free um, and then it also includes those granules and so forth and the higher resolution imagery but the day with this is the, the day that this was run um, which was yesterday or the day before yesterday, is that um, there weren't was not enough data to help fill in the gaps there, so they had to rely upon the radar imagers. So you see here that it's not exactly accurate. So why do we post this image? Um, why is it important? Well, because, albeit it may not benefit you here as much, you get out into some deeper water, and I can at least tell that, hey, I'm in 74, 72, degree water here um, versus, you know, 65, what this is saying. This is just kind of averaging things together. But at least I know that the water is going to be warm enough out here. Um, we've got some bathymetry we can we can include and some altimetry. If I can get in some decent altimetry, which looks like this, this area right in here is, um, you know, for instance, this rig and so forth and this one. And, you know, there, you at least know that those rigs are in decent altimetry and, and the temperature is warm enough. You may not, and you'll, I'm sure, run across a rip line between there, here and there, but at least you know you can target an area um, despite cloud cover. So that's why that multi-resolution exists. Um, it is a little bit, it's not as accurate in a sense, but it gives you a good general idea if you've got to make sure the temperatures are in the certain range. So when you have a good block of temperature in an area, it'll help you discern some things that you would not otherwise be able to discern unless this image is, exists. So if you have any questions about it or um, would like a little bit more explanation, feel free to contact me either through the Contact Us page or our uh, 877 number or um, if you already got my email, that's fine. You can do that there, and I'd be happy to do a one-on-one -on -one tu tutorial with anybody that has any questions or would like some further explanation. So thank you for watching the uh, Rip Chart uh, CTEMP tutorial.